Spellings. Welcome to math. And this is for the week of May 4th through 11th. And of course, this is your Ed Puzzle. Make sure that you've gone through the entire lesson, written notes, watched the videos, taken notes on them, because we're going to go in a little bit more depth today in our Ed Puzzle. So it is all about the money, honey. And we have some cool videos, one on Sally Mae and one on stock. All right. So college, what college would you like to go to? What companies would you like to own part of? And list as many companies as you can. So don't forget the obvious. Um, so what kind of toothpaste did you use this morning? What kind of shoes do you wear? What brand of underwear do you wear? Two of the most uh, successful stocks in the history of the United States have been Coca-Cola and Gillette Razors. And so don't forget to notice those things that you use every day. So we're gonna start, uh, this is a two-part lesson, and the cool thing about this lesson is it doesn't have any math calculations. It's all about information and learning things for your future. And so make sure that you do take lots of good notes because it's not about the math, it's about the information. So the FAFSA is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and it's a form you fill out to get help paying for college. So below there's a video on FAFSA. And the website is fafsa.gov. What does this mean? And we personify FAFSA, and when you're paying back that, um, the school loans and stuff that you may get through FAFSA, we call that Sally Mae. So Sally Mae is not a real person. It's just kind of a personification. We've kind of just put a girl's name to this government entity. So a lot of people feel like where you live is a big part of college, and that's awesome. Just keep in mind that you're gonna pay for that, and we'll look at those costs in just a second. And so where you live is called your room, and what you eat is called your board. It also can, um, pays for things like electricity, water, Wi-Fi, your utilities, and that kind of stuff, all right? So room and board, if you choose to live at home, usually your parents cover that, or you might choose an apartment off campus or a dorm on campus, and those prices are all gonna be different, so that's something to consider. So tuition, a lot of colleges like to brag about how low their tuition is, and that has been one of the tricks that they're using these days, is they're, keeping their tuition low, but they're raising the fees. So what I want you to realize is tuition just pays for the general running of the college and the professors. It does not pay for all these things. And so you're gonna to have to buy your own books. You may need access to apps for classes, parking, your dorm, food, science equipment, college computers. Even if you have your own computers, the college is gonna force you to pay for their computer labs. They're gonna force you to pay for the student gym and pool, even if you never walk in there. They're gonna force you to pay for graduation, campus pep rallies, recycling, on-campus transportation. So if they have a little bus that goes around, then these things are called fees and extras, and they pile on really quickly. So let's take a look at that. So I have the app linked here, but this is college cost per year. So think about where you wanna go. So if you wanna to go to a community college such as Austin Community College, this is how much it is for one year. If you wanna to go to an in-state public four-year institution such as UT, A&M, if you wanna to go to some other state's state college, it's 38,000 a year. If you want to go to a private nonprofit, Baylor, Rice, SMU, that kind of thing, it's about almost $50,000 a year. And if you want to go to one of the pricey places, Harvard, Yale, Notre Dame, etc., those are $72,000 a year. So right now, I want you to think about which type of college you are most likely to go to. And I want you to calculate the cost for five years of that college. So we think about it as four years, but really most of the time it's gonna end up taking five years to get through college.
All right. So you're going to be filling out the um, FAFSA when the time comes. And when you, you want to fill it out at the very beginning of the calendar year, starting your senior year of high school. And of course, we have folks here at Meridian that will help you with that. But then um, once you're in college, it's kind of up to you and you're going to do it the beginning of every calendar year. So January, February, that kind of thing. You want to fill it out as soon as possible. And usually the limiting factor is your parents need to do their taxes first. So you want to fill out the FAFSA as soon as your parents do their taxes. So the FAFSA will help you get grants, scholarships, college loans, and work study. Um, so there may be other forms you need to fill out for scholarships. And I want to let you know, a lot of students are like, oh, I'm smart, I'll get lots of scholarships. And that is an awesome thought. But what I want you to realize is that there's a whole lot of smart people out there. And if they weren't smart, they weren't, wouldn't be going to a good college. And if you want to go to a fancy place, whether it's UT or Yale or whatever, realize that you don't get in if you're not smart. So everybody that's there is smart. So for example, um, I, my IQ, GPA, whatever, okay, is in the top 2%. Of people okay so I'm, I'm pretty smart there top 2% and I lucked out the first two years of college I did get a really nice scholarship that paid for tuition and fees my parents still had to pay for room and board and that's pretty pricey but the last two years of college after that scholarship expired all I got was like $250 a semester which doesn't cover very much at all all right, back then it barely covered my books. And so sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not so great. And I want you to realize you really can't absolutely depend on scholarships, especially if you're just smart, okay? And it's awesome to be smart, but everybody in college is smart. So grants are free money for being from a needy family. And so if you get free and reduced lunches, you might actually, um, be able to get some grants. Loans are money that you have to pay back, and we're gonna come back to that. That's the Sally Mae, the, uh, the main thing that you talk about, the FAFSA, the college loans, all that kind of stuff. And they're super flexible on those loans, but they don't ever really disappear. And so you need to make sure that you read the small print. What is the interest rate that you're going to have to pay back in addition to how much you loaned? Are there points to it? And you'll have to figure out what those are. So I really want you to make sure when you get school loans, are they subsidized? Read all that small print. So here we are. Um, we're going to pay for college. So if we want to save money, where do we put it? A savings account might be a logical place, but there are some other options as well. We just want to make sure that you're careful with those. So let's talk about some investments, and this can be for college, this can be for retirement, whatever it is. So stock is owning a small part of a company, and then a bond is loaning money to a government entity. And there are lots of different government entities that you may not think about, and they're going to pay you back plus interest. A CD is not the disc music thing that your parents may have listened to. It's a certificate of deposit. And this is where you kind of loan money to a bank. The bank keeps your money for a certain amount of time. It's in a contract and everything. And then they return your money and pay you interest. So here are a couple of ways that you are getting paid extra money. So that's cool. Then we have the DJIA. And that's usually just called the Dow. It's even hard for me to say that. And it's the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And this is just a stock average that we're going to start talking about. And then we also have the S&P 500. Ironically, it stands for Standard and Poor's, but I think that was like the last names of some dead dudes back in the day. And this is just an average of 500 stocks. And these two things are called a stock index. So as we saw in our stock song, everybody's trying to get a piece of the pie, but you don't have to steal that from someone else. You can make your own pie. You can build your own business. 
You can buy it from someone else. So this is a lesson on how to buy stock. And then this is an introduction to index funds. And so when you're buying a stock, I want you to realize that you want to look for a company that you think has a bright future. Also, what you need to realize with stocks is that you, especially as we've seen this year, you never know what tomorrow brings. Everybody's like, oh, buy low, sell high, it's super easy, okay? But you never know what's gonna happen to the world or the United States or that company tomorrow. And so uh, the best way to do it is to find a company that you really think has a bright future and just buy that stock and sit on it, is what they call it. You just keep it and then also make sure, you know, whenever you're ready or you're gonna need the money soon or the stock market is up, then you go ahead and sell that stock. So for example, um, I recently got my check for $1,200 and I'm very grateful that at Meridian, of course, I'm still getting my paycheck. So what I did was I took that $1,200 and I put it into a stock account. And next week we'll talk about what kind of stock account I put it in. And so uh, I chose not only because I had an extra $1,200 that I didn't usually have, but also because the stock market is down because of all this COVID mess. Uh, the companies aren't necessarily doing well, but I do have confidence that the world will find a way and will return to business and that those companies that I invested in will do better in the future. And so I think that my $1,200 is gonna grow as the stock market and the economy come back after COVID. And so it's a little bit of a gamble. And so it wasn't money that I needed for bills or anything like that. But um, I do want it to grow, and that's part of my retirement. So that's one of my plans there. All right. So I hope you've learned a lot about money. And later, we're going to learn some shortcuts if you're not really into in investigating all these stocks and looking at these details. I'll tell you what kind of shortcuts I like to use. Have a great week.